Welcome back to the PMA LCS. I am Sean Minbung Shane. I'm joined by Chris Vitautus Didisis. And we are waiting for Stewie Gan Wiener to come back uh, from <laughs> wherever he went. I think they're getting a drink. Uh, that was a game one win for the side of Legends on Tap, who are still vying for first place, I think, overall. But I do think there's like some tiebreakers that make it to where they can't get first place. There wasn't even a vie in that game. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> oh, we could get muted again. He's done. <laughs> and so, you know, just make sure to vote in that MVP poll as we will be getting into pick bands here very shortly as I give uh, the R for the rest of chat. Um, so, what, like, uh, thinking about the way that that went, what pick ban adaptations do you think we'll see I'm, I'm i'm highly expecting the either the nautilus ban or for the uh Tarek ban to come out from the side of y'all honestly i think bare minimum switch the asol ban for the nautilus ban right now that's like in i would highly suggest that if the draft could have played out the same way that's what i would have done game one if you get in a similar situation game two you need to be banning nautilus second rotation instead of that All right. I'm back. And uh, another thing I want to see coming out is perhaps a more cohesive team comp in general. Like, Legends on Tap just had an answer to everything that y'all wanted to do from that game. You know, you got the Riven split push. Riven actually did get a solo kill, you know, on Jax in that top lane, but then kind of just. Then over the course of the rest of the game, that advantage was kind of thrown away in general. It's on the side of y'all, and not really much about because of it so they had a really good moments in the early game like they were up four kills of zero already so i want to see them like perhaps turn the jets off and try and stifle like try and play as a team with that lead and you know play it smart stifle out you know, stifle out legends on tats options instead of just kind of running in and throwing it all away yep so the uh first couple of bands are going to be the kaisa right there Velkaz and Ivern respond in turn, and that no ban right there is a Morgana van focused at the uh, either mid lane or um, possible uh, support Morgana right there as well. So looking right there, and then the LeBlanc coming out. So we do see a little bit of ban adaptation between game one and two, and the Zillion still. So they do drop the Asol ban, but in for the likes of Ivern instead. Yeah, I actually really respect the Ivern ban here. I think that is a very good option going forward. And Legends has proven that he is more than adept at utilizing that Ivern to get Legends on tap a very large advantage. And removing that Ivern kind of removes away like the hard scaling free win, you know, composition that Legends on tap kind of built themselves. At least that's kind of the concept of it. You scale up to 30 minutes, you have the Ivern, you have Jax, you have Triss. Ivern butts people, and you just don't lose. Yeah, Stu, what do you I think th they should be going on doing in here? I'm not really sure. I don't know the champion lineup for you were losing lane. Um, if I were them, I would be. Uh, I would pick. A, I would pick a lot of CC. Um, you know, CC wins games, and, you know, they had it, but it, I don't think it was a lot of really strong CC like they had on the side of Lot. Spicy, and already the Lux Ash bot lane coming in, not bot lane, but the Lux Ash coming <laughs> in from y'all already. That'd be a Lux bot, honestly. Doesn't sound like a C vein champion to me. That's boring. Ooh, it could be C vein on Ash, but that also doesn't sound like a C vein to have. All right, and either way, though, that's a very interesting early pickup for the side of y'all. And Legends on Tap going to go ahead and answer back with this saver. So already we have, you know, we have likely a lot of bot lanes locked in in the first portion of this draft, and the Lux still flex pick. What do you think so far? Uh, I, I'm a little. I mean, maybe I'm not so surprised. I, I was a little surprised that we didn't see an Alistar picked up uh, almost immediately again, but I guess they, they figured it wasn't really useful in the previous game. Yeah, I think they've... I think they're trying a bit of a different style here and want to deviate away from trying to engage 5-on-5 five five team fights 
versus them, and they want to utilize this Braum instead to perhaps control the fight a little bit more. You know, it zoned them, and overall, I think 5v5 run at them has never been the all style of gameplay, so I think it makes sense that they try and deviate from this Alistar. And also, with the Lux lock in, it seems relatively likely that that could be going to your moves, theoretically, so probably not even needing to pick the Alistar away from them now. That being said, uh, I, it looks like. Y'all is going for more of a late game comp between the Nasus and uh, the Ash. Um, these are champions that I think it's all enough time could be really strong in the late game. And it seems that uh, Unwanted Davies has gifted a tier one to uh, given a tier one subscription to Lolly Hentai Esports, I believe. Lolly Hentai. It's gonna be Dylan. It's gonna be another Dylan account. Lolly Hentai Esports and the Aurelian Soul Band being run back in the final phase of the draft and Legends on Tap banning out its entire pool basically just to be safe. Diana Van coming in, Victor Van. Like pretty much every van on the team of Legends on Tap is the CMN van, except for arguably the Morgana. <laughs> hilarious. Wow. Kogma. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Pretty spicy. And it's like Kog'Maw's I mean, not... <laughs> They're not scared of the Kog'Maw. Like, they have Brom Silver Chairman. They're just gonna run that... They're just gonna run that poor sack of garbage down every wow. team fight. Moomoo coming out here from y'all, actually. Uh, Moomoo, a very, very popular pick on this new patch here. <gasps> Benefiting greatly from personal buffs to his kit, quality of life changes, as well as the scuttle spawn time being moved to 3 minutes 15 seconds. Allows him to get that quick level 3 in and utilize that bandage toss for taking the scuttle crab, so he's not forced to cry and suffer the entire time. So, there have been so many changes that have brought Amumu to the forefront in this patch here. A lot of love for the poor sad mummy. Yeah, re recurring trend. Recurring trend seems to be that he lacks love, and he also lacks friends, which, same dude. Remember same when there was that music video out that came out about him? Oh, yeah, that I was, remember that. That was a sweet video. I kind of enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it was, it was nice. I forget what the name of that, but Man, uh, there's, Kogma, the yeah, Kogma. there's the Kogma going to be locked in. The classic, and we'll see. I how think that'll be the name of this game. Kogma. There's the Kogma. Yep. And this is actually going to be an extremely scary comp coming in from the Legends on tap again. We have that Vladimir here. And a whole lot of teamfight in Wombo. The Sivir and Vladimir are going to be able to clean up teamfights very effectively. The Jarvan Wombo Cataclysm to start the fight off. And Braum just has so much crowd control. Can control the teamfight exquisitely. All that crowd control, all that chaos should be no trouble for already to run around, wreak some havoc in the back line, and you have a lot of very squishy targets on the side of y'all. Lux, Ash, and Kogma, all of the carries of y'all have no escape ability, so I feel like Legend Suns and Tap, especially with this Ari and the team comp they put together, is going to have a heyday running it straight down mid. And I, I just don't see Kogma being all that viable against an Ari. Yeah, it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a rough lane. He should have played Anivia. Yeah, always play Anivia, dude. Always. Anivia is the best champion in the game. It's hands down, true. Yeah. <laughs> all you gotta do is fly at them and all you gotta do is fly at them and go squawk, and bam, they die. Genius. And Genin's not saying that as a former Anivia main himself, or as a person with a team captain who was formerly an Anivia one trick. Yeah. Totally not saying that. <laughs> not at all. I played a game of Anivia top earlier today. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> I won the lane. Yeah, that, that is true. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like Legends on Tap has... <laughs> Legends on Tap honestly just setting up that draft and begging Seaman to play the Kog'Maw into them. So, you know, you look at the comp, you have Victor, like, they ban pretty much every champion of Seaman that isn't Kog'Maw, and then with the Ari blind pick, that has to be a matchup that Panic at the Top Hat feels very comfortable in into that Kog'Maw. Yeah, I, I find when when people, like, quadruple, quint, uh, uh, quadruple quintuple ban someone, I find that to be mad respect 
for the one they do it to, but also mad disrespect to everyone else on that team. Because it's like, we don't care what y'all play. Uh, we're going to, we're just, we're just going to ban out this one guy and then everyone else, you know, whatever. You just play whatever. We'll just deal with you. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And uh, especially y'all doesn't really have any peel for their carries either. <laughs> like, there's no peel on the side of this team. It's, I don't know what, I don't know what tools they have to work with here. Like, they literally, like, Legends on Tap literally has to be not grouped as five, and y'all have to find an Ash Arrow. That's about all they get. Pretty much. I don't know, if they make it to, if, if Nasus makes it to the late game, if a Moomoo makes the late game, if the Ash gets makes the late game, then I could see y'all put it out, but I, it's gonna be rough getting there. Yeah. <coughs> I very much could see that happening in Vladimir, especially if he takes a, uh, this is a phase rush land, I'd say. Yeah, Vladimir can easily take phase rush into this land, and he has very good options against Nasus in the early game, and Fletchens MK gives that top side some attention, it's going to be pretty bad news for Iron 4 Noob. However, we have seen Iron 4 Noob's Nasus been a go-to a couple times this split, and he's traditionally had very solid results on it, so uh, that being issue, go on. That being said, the, the the smart Nasus player, even in a bad matchup, can be very viable. Um, and that that means losing out on CS. That means playing back. But you just get those stacks, and you get those stacks, and you get those stacks. And over time, you're going to be strong. Yeah, you forgot the one thing he does after that. Do you know what it is? He, he gets those stacks. It's right. Uh, but I forgot, in between, like, in between each of that, he gets those stacks. Oh, yeah, of course. Is he like, is he like the League of Legends version of Stack Attacker? <laughs> like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand that reference. This is a, like, there's this gigantic Pokemon, its name is just Stack Attacker, and every time I see Nasus, I just Stack Attacker, because he stacks is, is that, and then he attacks. Is yeah. that a, one of the, um, one of the new ones? Yeah, it's one of the new ones. Dude, Nessus is a good boy. He, he's stacked. His, he is that a legendary? Uh, it's an Ultra Beast. I don't know what that is. It's, it's a new thing, like Generation 7. Like, I forget. It's like Generation 8. It's a new thing that comes out. Like, they, they're like, from like this different dimension. They come in through a wormhole, and they all look like just whatever the hell they are. It's like, they're designed to like not look like animals, you know? They're designed to look like actual, just like, what the hell is going on type beast. Jesus. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it was Sun Ultra and Moon Ultra. Yep, like, Pokemon... Pokemon has gone off the deep end, and it's kind of bad, but at the same time, it's also actually pretty good. Like, I honestly enjoy it. I think it's very creative. I, I, I couldn't get into Sun and Moon. I it's just... There. I just couldn't. I am excited for the game coming out. I, I am looking forward to... What is it? Sword and Shield? Oh, yeah, Sword and Shield. That's going to be so hype. I am looking forward to Sword and Shield. Very I am much. I'm so excited for that game. Now, mean, that being said, my game. I. Okay. I, I, I'm very proud. Um, not with Sun and Moon, but uh, up until Generation 6, I had a living Pokedex. I was very proud of that. A living Pokedex? That's amazing. And yeah. It took me yeah, like actually, months. Months. Speaking of Pokemon, I went to see Detective Pikachu today. Is How I is it? It's, it's pretty good. Uh, I'd say the story suffers a lot from pacing issues, but like other than that, I had fun. Good movie. So I how I, I I gotta say, how was Detective Deadpool in the Detective movie? Detective Deadpool that meme. Uh, you know, I didn't really notice it that much. I was like, okay, it's Pikachu, it's Ryan Reynolds' voice. Oh, uh, you know, I'll accept that. It is what it is. Took me like two minutes to get over it. I was good. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll have a chance to see it this week. Dude, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm going from uh, so this week, uh, this this week I'm where I'm currently in. I'm, I'm, uh, I am in a symphony, but I'm gonna pause on that story for the men bug minutes. And go! All right, guys. So a little bit more of the same here, but there's a lot more scaling coming from the side of y'all this time. 
Uh, they do have some late game insurance plans in the way of Iron Four Noob on the Nasus and Sivan's or Innovox Cogma right there. Gonna have a CC ridden bot lane right there. But if you kind of look on the other side, that what Lots got, they got a lot of PMA LCS specials right yeah. here. Uh, they have a bunch of circle buttons and they have a bunch of boat go buttons on their R's. So easy to execute comp right here. That's probably gonna give them uh, the go right now. And uh, Legends and K on Jarvan. I mean, if you were upset that he got MVP last game, well, you better, you're going to be really upset when you see the way he plays Jarvan. Uh, also, a Kaut in a ranged matchup into the Nasus is going to be really, really free. Hoping to see that Club Demancy. I'm predicting lots 2 0 for the rest of this uh, series. I have to agree. Perfect, and that has been the Medbug Minute, sponsored by the PMA Westboro Baptist, I mean the Church of Bunkpalia. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's right? <laughs> you know how it goes. And on that note, wow, hey look, loading screen. Yeah, you know, Game Lean, have you actually tried out the new Snapchat filter? Uh, uh, Menbunk tried it. I have not. I have, uh, I think Dude. I might be the oldest person in the LCS. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, I, I'm either oldest or very close to it. Really? How old are you? If they didn't want I'm me asking. 30. Okay, you might actually be the oldest, because I know someone else is 29, but... That's Eric. Quesh. Quesh is, Quesh oh, is 29. Oh, is 29. There's someone else who's 29, too, and I won't say him. I won't say his name. I mean, I don't think, I don't, I mean, we're men, we're men of music, I don't think we really care about how old we well, are at the end of the day, but, well, you know, that's, that's private. Flesh, Flesh and I are, <laughs> uh, Flesh and I are basically the same person. Did um, you pause, we, by the way, at 10? I did, I did. Uh, uh, Flesh and I are basically the same person, the only difference is he's a band director and I'm a choir director. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Never lucky, dude. <laughs> dude. That being said, I'm trying to move to Dallas, so... <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that being said, though, the Snapchat filter, I'm gonna be honest, is it sad I'm attracted to the female version of myself? That's exactly what Menbug said! <laughs> Jesus. Oh dude, like... my god. Oh god, the, <laughs> yeah, cops I, are next door, no! Oh wait, uh, I uh, got some bush posturing, spicy level 1 being prepared here. Y'all actually taking the same invade path, but Legends on Tap is privy to this. They are moving as 5 at as well, sitting in the bush right here. Flag and drag, check in the bush. And now y'all sitting in on here, Lux Mind coming out, and there's Sharp coming in. Yerbo is taking extremely low flashing out, I for a noob though in the back, Legends in K. Also, their first blood actually going over to C Man though, and Sir Everett's getting going. Iron for a noob. Two kills for both teams already. Sir Everett's stuck in the front line though, gonna be taken down. And that is a three for as a three for two a victory in the invade going over to y'all. And also noted is the uh, two kills for C Van on the Kogma, plus a first blood. That's gonna give him a huge advantage of merely two assists that Ari got. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And, uh, well, unfortunately for him, though, he's not actually going to get the back before that lane started. So, you know, not really going to get to establish his dominance early on in this lane. But, but if he can manage to push that wave out and get a back. Uh, at gold. I think that's something he will be able to do. And not only that, you know, even if they back at similar times, it's still going to be the advantage to C-Van on items after that first back. Yeah, and you know, the fast lost chapter is going to quickly become an option in that lane. If we're used to seeing C-Van go Seraph's Embrace traditionally on uh, Kog'Maw going for that fast Archangels and stacking is, it up. Is AP a Kog'Maw, AP Kog'Maw a thing? Uh, it is, it is if you're C-Van. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, this has been a C-Van special that he's played for a while, and uh, it's no surprise that he's busting it out here as his pocket pick, but I feel like a little draft from Legends of Heaven's Terror Mate, 599 coming in with a bandage toss, and the ball of CC from Slash. Slashes, not why we're going to clean up that kill. 
quick kill going off the all in the bot lane gank here. A lot of action at the beginning of this game. Mm -hmm. A quick. Yeah, and traditionally, y'all's early game has been the part of the split that they're actually best at, which has been rather surprising. But sounds a lot like OTP. Yeah, at the same time, when you're doing the when you're doing with Plus some of the, 12. I feel like as well, some of uh, like some of y'all's players are highly slept upon in the individual skill category, and so they're finding lane assignments, they're finding matchups that they're finding comfort picks that really work for them. And traditionally, their lane assignments have led them into doing that. However, I feel like it becomes an issue when they're actually trying to put together cohesive team comps and also work as a team to really master that mid-game transition. And Legends of K visiting the bot lane slug slash gonna flash out of that flag and drag real quick. I always love that flag flag and drag. Very appropriate, very fun to say. It, it really rolls off the tongue, it's so good. And now, uh, another bandage toss from back on 9 9 coming in. Wow, Taking I am extremely super, low. super surprised that hit. Yeah, dude, that is one long Amuma bandage, and the nice part about that is actually panic the top hat so low that, honestly, at this point, you know, Seaman's gonna get the back he wants relatively soon, and I'm not sure how much gold he's sitting on. Let me try and check. Oh, I just paused. Oops. You want me to pause? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, can I get a timer check? I'm at 5.08. Oh, wow. Yeah, I am about 20 seconds behind. I have 20 seconds behind. Alright. Ah, uh, crap. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to pause. I am currently, like, I don't have anything after, like, where I'm at on the right. video right now. I'm at 51. Yeah, so you guys can just pause to 51 right. then. Sorry. Okay, then you can go to 56. I'm at, yeah. yeah, I'll go to 56. Okay, I'm gonna wait for mine to roll to 56 and pause it there, and then we'll have Sean count on off again. Might be, guys. Baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark. I, re I remember that cast from the Hansu, like, the first time me and Hansu casted. Oh man, that was, that was interesting. Alright, I'm paused. Alright. 58, 59, 6, yep. 1. Alright, we are good. We're sitting now, boys. We are kitchen synced and ready to go. Uh, mid game, uh, or five minute, what do you call it? Um, stack check on Nasus. He's about 57 stacks. Uh, and that, and that was, I would say that is actually under where I would want him to be. I would probably want him to be around 60, 70. Um, so we think push that lane just a little bit. We find the Legend of KNO. We visit in the spot lane, though. Double knockout from Flag and Drag. It's like a slash for Kata with no flash here. Quick kill going over to Legends of K. Huh? I'm at 639. You get this. We're at 540, whatever. Wait, what the hell is going on? Oh my god. Okay, pause. I didn't I'm at, do anything. I'm at 550. Alright, I'm at 550. Yeah. 610, okay. I'm here. I'm not. No, I'm not there. I'm still not there. Wait. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm pausing 610. Okay. We're good. I'll be checking. Hopefully nothing breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's Jarvan who gets it. 
Yeah, I'm not saying this gank we're gonna come in is the one I just casted, but uh, it's the one I just casted. Oh, uh, we're gonna come into the gank of this bot lane here. Uh, no, we're not gonna the flag in there. It's like a slash caught out here with no flash axe. We can't go over to Legends MK. Oh my god. I, I think I casted that the exact same way. Like, besides the I think I got that the exact same way. Good. Oh my god. Perfect. Everything. Alright, NASA's is the way it should be. Nasus went back for his sheen, and he is catching up on where he needs to be with those with those uh, stacks really Actually, quick. Actually, an event coming in from Legends. Zero moves here to answer in the jungle, but Kogma oh, over the wall. Decent amount of damage going on to Legends. With Snipey popped on Barkman 99. Black and Drag over the wall. Legends in case. Securing the kill on Barkman 99. Here comes Steve Vance. Kogma into the jungle. Panic from top hat here to answer with the Ari combo. Shut down on the City Man. And that is going to be a lovely... Bad amount of kills going on to the Ari. Meanwhile, directing camera directing me away from Slug and Slash at throwing more skill shots over at Legends MK. I love directed camera. Never change. I like to follow one player exclusively, but that doesn't do me very much good right now. <laughs> <laughs> Rough times. Remind us never to have you on the streaming crew. That was a joke. I mean, I'm not going to do direct streaming. <laughs> Usually if I'm expecting because I'm expecting a particular person. That'd make a lot of sense. And an Iron for a noob actually popping that figure of the sands in the top lane. And a count. Actually, that's not the Sanguine pool. Gonna have to flash away from that Bandit Stoss coming to the with 99. And, yeah, you know, I gotta say, great gank pressure coming out from this Amumu early, but the big issue is he's currently sitting at 25 CS at 813. Oh my Love god. Boy. And Let's the K has found him in the top side jungle. That's gonna be fatical coming out. Here, so much damage coming out from the Jarvis Vladimir duo. That is a very sad and very dead Amumu. What has he been doing? Uh, running in the lanes a lot. Yeah, but he doesn't have much to show for it. He doesn't have much to show for it. He's got four assists. Yeah. He's got 100% kill participation, bro. Come on. You're not wrong. He does. But uh, Jarvan is also has 100% kill participation and has some kills and a lot more farm. Yeah, he's also he's also two levels up already, but yeah, yeah. that is wow. true. Rough times. Yeah, Barkman uh, Bark died three times actually. That's brutal. Yeah. Oh, My stream is actually exploding. I'm at 9, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Alright, good. Christ averted. I'm getting some very weird stutters in here, so I'm just making sure. And some trading will be going on in this bot side right now. Sir Everett's brought down kind of low. Got like 60% right now. He'll be fine. Uh, it's Alardo and Slaga Slasha, the double range combination that's Ash and Lux, trying to bully out the Sivir Brom. You know, Sivir's got the spell shield, but she definitely has to hold the spell shield for you know, the Ash Enchanted Crystal Arrow at this point. Uh, speaking of which, Legends of K coming down topside though, and Glacial Fisher pot. Tons of damage going down. It's all Alardo caught between a rock and a hard place right now. Kill going over to Sir Ever. It is not looking good for y'all right now. I feel like this is the same story as last game. Y'all had something that went right in a super early to early game, and going forward into the rest of the waiting phase, and then especially into the mid-game transition that we'll see happening soon, it's just kind of suffering. Gotta give lots of credit to uh, Legends MK on his jungling. He is just making so his team all over the map. It really is, and the Ocean Drake actually can be taken down over there. Meanwhile, on top lane, though, a cow can be taken to Kinetic. Lost Iron Core, Noob, though. Pop that Sanguine. A cow actually been popping the Sanguine pool an extremely large amount in this lane. That's definitely not how you want to play that lane, is Vladimir, because once you pull the Sanguine pool, the Gnosis withers you and runs you down like the dog you are. Except he's the dog, too. I thought it really interesting because uh, when I I love playing um, I love playing as a York versus the Vladimir because in the Sanguin pool it had a York's uh, little little uh, cubicle yeah. or whatever um, cubicle huh? uh, 
just, you know, he can't get out. He's stuck there. Yeah, yeah even if he's saying we pause, he doesn't go through the darker procession. So, Duric actually has a decent amount of fun on that matchup. Annoying part, though, is he can still get bullied out of lane by the Vladimir, and Tied to Blood has a lot of AoE, so, like, it can be a pain sometimes. Uh, something interesting, though, is, is uh, his little uh, pets are, um, they're resistant to spell damage. Uh, it's it's auto attacks that really have to take them out. That's true. It's a point that Vladimir is, does too much damage though. And uh, Markman 99 actually saying hi top lane with a bandage toss. And Wither. And Nightboard didn't even get the Wither for Sad Mummy coming out though. Looking for the plus 12. But Markman 99. I'm trying to give it over to him here. I for you. Flash and forward. That's gonna be a kill going over. That rip off has been finished off, and here's Legends of K to help him out. Panic from top hat here on Iron for a new and help him out. And this NASA's gonna run away, but Legends of K taking extremely low C Man's here to answer the shutdown. Going over to C Man on Cogbot. Now Panic from Top Hat's kinda of caught out in top spot. Flash and a weapon coming out. He's doing his best to run away. The Nazis dropping the wither though. And oh, plus one, 12! Again coming out for Iron for new on this Nasus. That is a lot of stacks going on that NAS. We are currently at 12 minutes and 44 seconds, and he has 249 stacks. He has caught up and surpassed. This uh, NAS could be a win condition for y'all. Yeah, it's disgusting. Your moose actually caught out in the bottom side jungle as well. Kill going over to Slaga Slash it in the end. Pop that ignite and the glacial fisher on Slaga trying to get a kill on the way out just wasn't enough. And uh, meanwhile, they would go for more training on Iron Ford New, but that is one buff Nasus. He has the cow, he has the sheen. And the all-in combo could be dropped from a cow, but what can he do? The answer is pretty much nothing. Going back with a flash in. Actually, not going to get him. Finds the blood coming out, though. Oh my god. Jeez. That is disgusting. <laughs> yep. That's extremely disgusting. My FPS is like tanking so bad. It just dropped 17. Wow. Jesus. I love it. Is that your internet? Maybe. I don't know. I have AT&T. AT&T is awful. Never get AT&T. I have AT&T, but I have fiber. Well, yeah, that's the one thing you can get from pretty much any internet corporation. Honestly, like almost every internet corporation in in North America is pretty like awful. Well, the only the only in Houston, the only uh, fiber that exists is AT&T. Makes sense. That's like slash actually gonna be caught out in this bot way. Here, massive damage coming in from Sir Everett, and Zaga Slash can get mowed down. On the hunt, actually popped here, and Panic Top Hat coming from the side, going on C Vance on here. Char coming out, Direct and Saw are gonna hit him. Quick flash out from the edge, so much damage coming out, and Panic Top Hat can be brought extremely low from that. Fight disengaged, and overall, no one dying except for Slaga Slash at the beginning of that. This Slaga Slash was though. just a little bit out of place. Hold on, Legends, Legends of Cape on Barkman 99 again in the topside jungle, popping his combo. That's gonna be a very dead of Moo Moo once again. Has to feel like Deja Moo Moo for him over here. And <laughs> now a count in a very rough spot on this Vladimir Iron for Noob. That is one big dog, plus 12. God. Slam that Vladimir back to the Stone Age. He and is up to over 300 stacks of humans. He's now at 20. Uh, stacks a minute, that is incredible. Is that right? And, and, yeah, yeah, you hate to see that, man. And, uh, let's not tap actually, though. The bot lane 2 are gonna close out that bot lane turret, but Iron 4 Noob answered back at the top. And it snatches 4 kills, yeah, like, almost are... 300 attacks. This is, this is bad. This is a very bad situation to be in. It, you know, the, it's nice that the bot lane on the side of Lot got the uh, got the tower, but they are going to have to find a way to answer this Nasus if they want to stay in this game. See, man, we got up a panic top hat here. That's a lot of damage coming in. Just not going to have enough to finalize the kill in the end. Oh, it's really interesting that uh, uh, Nasus went for a Spirit Massage first. That's a really strong, because uh, with Nasus' passive and the lifestyle he gets from every attack, um, on top of what he is already, 
plus the extra damage he gets from his Q, um, and, and the magic resistance he gets from that is going to make uh, him really strong against Vladimir. Yeah, that is honestly a big boy dog. Like, and he got the sheet, he clearly has the damage, and Baku 99 goes from Smite Steel, not going to fight it so much as it takes during that dragon, and now on the hunt, call but Cap going to clean up Baku 99 on the side, but here's Steve Vance Cogma, that's so much damage, you're most supposed to flat. See, man, looking for the Snipes of Kog'Maw, it's just not going to be enough. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, just the general team play on the side of Lot is just so much cleaner than, um, y'all. Uh, it, 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 the only thing that's making this game not look like the previous game is just the sheer oppressiveness that seems to be coming forward from this Nasus. Yeah, Iron Four Noob is in an extremely good spot. Legends on Tap has had a lot of trouble dealing with this dog going forth into this game. And to a the cow to actually hit him with an empowered transfusion literally does no damage. Like, this Nasus is borderline unstoppable already. It's 17 minutes into the game. That with this being said. And they're going for making the Nasus. Iron Four Noob going to flash out of that flag and drag. They also have a 3 1 Kogma right now who's up 25 CS. Like, y'all are in a pretty decent spot. That being said, they're still down in gold, though. They're down in gold, they're down in objectives. Uh, dragons. And, uh, but they are definitely still in this game. Yo, know, Legends on Tap very much. I feel like Legends on Tap has a big window to win this game. They just gotta play around this Nasus and actually respect him now. And in shit, they don't take bad fights, questionable fights, and ensure they know where this Nasus is at all times. And oh my god, it's cute! Really rough spot here, Proto bouncing, and he dunked Legends of Case and Slug Slush in the jungle, gonna combo him off, that is what dead Lux. And Markman 99 now caught on the wrong side of the jungle. The Accursed Sad Mummy coming out, and Seaman on the side of this Kog'Maw, not going to be doing that much damage. Markman 99 taking down, Flag Drag, last combo coming in for Legends of Case. Seaman's now caught in a tight spot, he'll go in over to Legends of Case. And take a look at the, in the meantime, Ari in the bot lane, just pushing that tower. Split push Ari. Yep. The old, the good old split push Ari. And not only y'all kind of getting caught in rough spots, basically it's running in one at a time and dying and then getting picked off, but at the same time, all. Also, not respecting the lane aside from Legends on Tap, because they have a split pushing Ari that is now going to manage to take down this tower, and they still lost the team fight to Legends on Tap with the super fed in it. So. Well, Nasus wasn't back, really in there, yeah, but. Back, yeah. So they just ran into the jungle while the Nasus was backing, and that's a big issue. When uh, it, it's. I'm not sure what's going on in the comms right now, y'all, but uh, it seems to me that that was a big communication uh, snafu. Yeah, you hate to see that one happen. It's going to be scary time. <laughs> C-Van actually taking this red buff away. You've seen that traditionally going over to the AD carry, but uh, C-Van Alpha Kogma putting on his warband pants right now. Gonna, gonna see what he can do in this game. Get that red buff. Or he's the Nasus is uh, it is 20 minutes. Nasus is over 400 stacks. And Legends MK though getting caught out by the Lux binding. And I for new pop free of sand. They're going for a lot of damage here, but not actually gonna find a kill in the end. And Slug and Slash is just mowed down on the retreat. Kill going over wow. to Sir Everest. That's so much damage. Yeah, he's six and two right now, um, and. Already has an IE and an S. That is. Your moves caught a tight spot. Can pop the glacial fisher and do his best to run away, but the snipes coming in from Kogma's living artillery gonna finish him off in the end. And Iron Four Noob is now caught in a tight spot along with Steven. Iron Four Noob can get mowed down, kill going over to Sir Everett's, and this poor Kogma over here now stuck in the tight spot. Gonna get a kill on Legends of K on the, on the backside. Unfortunately, though, gonna be brought down in the end. Going with Sir uh, I, I'm not really sure what's going on in the head, going through the minds of y'all right now. They're just, uh, they're, they seem to be just sticking around and playing in places they don't need to be right now. Yeah, it's the tilt factor, man. I think at this point they're just kind of, it's kind of walking around the map. They're not utilizing the tools they have 
to win the game. They're not utilizing Kog'Maw to clear waves. They're not doing a good job of assigning waves. And, you know, Asteroid hasn't been a part of any of these fights at all. She's, been, she's just been chilling, clearing waves, bottom side. And the rest of y'all has been walking into the enemy jungle, not letting Nasus getting his split push pressure, not letting bot lane waves push at all, not utilizing the Kog'Maw again, the wave clear mid, as I said. And just need to be, just need to do a much better job of playing the map. And if they don't want to play the map, just try taking better fights in general. Uh, looking at the uh, scores right now, you have a 0 7 6 uh, Amumu. That'd be 0 8 6 because zero, eight, he's not six. Hot. And he's, he's not like. Uh, I'm looking, I, I see lots of farm up. I think some of this farm was taken by his teammates. Um, he's just. He's, he's behind by almost double uh, his CS. It's just, it's basically 5v4 right now. He is having a rough time tonight, dude. You know how it goes. Sad, pan sad, uh, sad mummy. Sad panda. <laughs> uh, no, it's the, it's a, it's a really old one. I won't lie. I'm old. What can I say? Hey, man. Hi, old. I'm dead. Ha! Ah, there it is. I haven't gotten one of those in this cast. Figured it was my time. Uh, I am not, you know, I may be the oldest, but I'm not a dad, so I don't have those jokes yet. They're not on lock. Ooh. And, oh, oh, God, no. no. I've oh, seen this one before. He has a family, man. Come on. Actually, he doesn't. He's lonely. Sad. Oh. But he has family. I thought new, though, going to push your account down on the top play. Flashing on Sir Everett, so this is Nats to get the world right now. Stun CC combo in. Arrow coming from the side from Zawarido, but it's not going to be enough. I have more new brought down in the end. Some of this damage coming up in the Kog'Maw combo, although, but Legend's also going to walk out of this one pretty much in this game. I just kind of wish that y'all would group. But I, this... don't, I don't think they need a group. They just need to. They just need. They need to get wards in their jungle. They need that to. Too. Yeah, they need to move as a unit. They need to get. They need to find the ward pressure to ensure that they can get this NASA split push pressure. And they need to ensure that they are not dropping waves in the side lanes as well, because you know, dropping side lane waves is something that can be overlooked a huge amount, especially when. You're doing what they're doing right now. You're running into the enemy's jungle and just taking fights. It can be very easy to overlook the sideways. And, you know, if you're letting sideways die to turrets over the well, course of the game, like, you're going to fall gradually behind as you should look to transition <laughs> later into the game. Now, now that I see this, take a look at this. Uh, take a look at, at the warding trinkets for the side of uh, y'all. They have three sweepers, one farsight, and one warding totem. No wonder they don't have any vision. They don't have anything to put vision on the map. Yeah, they also have no pinks, except for one pink each from the top lane of the jungler, so... I just need a lot more pinks on this map right now. Cause these... I mean, actually there are two pinks, but... I think they just need more pinks in the inventory as well. Let's Pretty be real. Vision. Meanwhile, no. in the top lane, though, this one beefy Nasus, Legends of K flashing out of there. Sir Everett's popping me on the hunt, though. I'm gonna make it out of that one unscathed in the end. But let's be real. We talk about MVPs, but the real MVP of, of all League of Legends matches is Vision. That is true. Vision's so good. I mean, if you want a clean game, the MVP is always Vision. The MVP, That's right. if you want, if you want an unclean game where you run it down and kill, the MVP is mechanics. <laughs> Every time, I won't <laughs> lie. Like Vision, Vision is Vision wins games. It's so good. And if you have if you have a lot of vision on the map and even one person paying attention, it can make it can make games where you know you have even the most like interesting of teammates very easy to win as long as they know how to listen. Jesus, say hey, what? Man, bunk, say that again. I think I'll just change my summoner name to Vision so I can always be the reason that teams win games. Jesus. <laughs> That's oh, funny. Panic at the top hat caught out in this mid lane with his nasty style. Ooh. Big boy damage coming out of his dome. Pop of fear, the sand's going in. And the CC combo coming on the legend to MK though. Here he's caught in a very tight Whoa. spot. Go going Must on to Iron well. Core Noob. I think that was the side strike though. Yeah, that was a very outstanding CC chain. 
Uh, Lux Binding coming in, and then the Enchanted Crystal Arrow from Zawarudo doing a very good job of crowd controlling. And then the Bandage Toss as well. Very crucial. And now, actually, y'all gonna start up this Baron buff here. This know. seems to be more of a desperation Baron, especially since they don't all the teams to be together. So scary. And now, here comes the Collapse from Legends of K. Bark with 99 seconds. The Pit, the Speed Double Flash is over the wall. And on the hot pop by Sir Everett's, but it looks like. Nessus wasn't pushing mid. Oh, big damage coming out of Slug Slash's Lux, though. And Nessus is finally taking a tier 1 turret in the mid lane. And Iron Four Noob here is going to be caught between a rock and a top place, but he is a big dog. And he you is going to say a rock run. and a top place? I might. I might have, honestly. That's caught fine. In between, maybe he's caught in between a panic and a top path then. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's going the crazy. Fact that, the fact that Sean doesn't like it just makes me... <laughs> yeah, that makes it even better. So, uh, we, should, we should have a counter at the, uh, the top right of the stream. It's like, what is Chris's FPS right at right now? Right now, it's, it's sort of like a solid 45. I've actually never seen this game worse. This looks like complete duty. <laughs> <It's pretty awful. laughs> lower your, uh, lower your uh, quality. No, I don't want to touch anything live because the FPS isn't affecting like the time. So I don't want to like, I don't want to make my computer think, bro. Once I make my computer think, it's gonna, gonna, if I do something, I don't want it. The screen's working. It's not interrupting the time. We're fine. Okay. But so looking forward into this game, though, what do you think y'all needs to do to actually? Try and get themselves back into this one. I think they need to change out some some of their sweepers for actual, or at least at least one of their sweepers for actual uh, wards. Number one, get some more wards in the map. They every single one, uh, you can see they all of them have bought pinks, but they need to be placed now. Um, and uh, there is just a lot of you know. I I love Nasus for his ability to split. But um, if your team top half low and it's like slashing in the mid lane, Barkman Knight to follow after double kill going over to Panic Top Hat, and let's just tap our just gonna run it down this mid lane right now on the hunt pop by Sir Everett, and the count is currently split pushing in this bottom lane, added some adding some additional pressure, and Nasus Big Dog is now back, and he has a third man actually hit top hat though, great combo with the C man be a tank then on to him. Kill going over to a cow. The flash going down. They want Panic to top half. They're going to fight him. Kill going over to Iron Fort Noob. Unfortunately, this is so much damage. And that's going to be an ace for Legends on tap. There is no way that they don't win now. Yeah, at this point, they can pretty much just run it down. And they should win. It's a Mumu. It's a Mumu up. There's Lux. The other one is dead as Ari. This should be relatively easy close, but... They don't want it, actually. They play, play well, safe. I don't blame them. They, they can, they can play safe. safe. <clears throat> they can do whatever they want. Oh god, dude, this this poor Mumu. -moo. Every time I look at this, every time I look at this scoreline, I just get sadder and sadder. And if he gets, if he gets two, if what he gets two, gets like thirteen deaths. Death. Yeah, I think we could break PMA LCS death records tonight. We, we might be able to do it. <laughs> oh, perfect. We need more. Is that why it's shoot because it's a tie, not because it's the most? That's funny. Why does that tilt him? Is everything else right? I think the better question is what doesn't tilt Rich at this point? <coughs> And more Baron posturing to be done here on the side of Legends on tap. And some good board coverage in here with the pinks. Y'all gonna have a difficult time extending to clear for this vision as really the they have this zero and ten of Mumu right now, so really the only front line they're gonna have that's going to be viable is gonna be that Nasus, but Nasus is currently split pushing in the bottom side, handling those super minions, and this is the cue for Legends on tap to go ahead and start up that Baron buff. 
try to see if y'all can manage to contest this. That's some pretty big damage coming on their cat. Sangling like Cool gonna be five. Tiana Crystal Air going into the bear, and they're all gonna steal. Legend Attack gonna close the bear, and Slug and Slash are actually getting killed on a cat, though. Got in a very tough spot, though, and Yurmu's actually walking out on Barkman 99. Southport coming in from Iron Forge Noob, though. And Pankasaw Man looking for the kill on Sawarado going. Charm goes wide, but he's gonna get the kill in the end. And now this is one scary Nasus against the world running in on Sir Everett's right now, but this is Charm coming up from Ari. If I can drag so much crowd control, going to go down in the end. Kill going over to Legends MK. God I just, bless you, Medbug. I just don't understand what the purpose of sending Matt Nasus to, to solo lane when they're putting so much pressure elsewhere. And he really is their damage. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of, like... They really can't do anything about it, because they send the Nasus to split, they lose team fights, but you send the Nasus not there, then you lose all your melee pressure, you know? You lose all your map pressure, then, if you bring the Nasus to fight, because their comp is pretty much weaker in team fights, so... At that point, they're really... They really don't have a win condition at that point with how far behind they put themselves. And, you know, on that note, that is going to be a Game 2 victory going over to Legends on tap there. And we we almost got the Fable 12 deaths, but uh, unfortunately, though, one shy. We'll get him next time. And going forward, uh, we got to ask... The question, who do you think the MVP of this uh, game two is I don't, gonna be? I don't think it's a question. I think once again it's got to go to Legends MK. So strong in the jungle, completely making the Amumu irrelevant on the side of y'all. Uh helping make plays, protecting the team, uh even uh it's just it's gotta be Legends MK. Yeah, I gotta agree. Legends going to be a uh, extremely easy call for both games, actually. Okay, stream can hear me, so yeah, let's go vote. Oh, that's why, because I had the friggin' stream open the entire time on my browser and my internet can't support that. That would explain a lot. Mm, makes sense. Huh. self -sabotage. You should have had, uh, you should, you should have uh, fiber. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. All right. Yeah, dude. Yeah, get your fiber. <laughs> It's healthy for I mean, I'm eating, fiber, life. Like, I'm eating life right now, dude. But I'm getting as much fiber as I can. Wow. Life. <laughs> life is delicious. Let's be real. All right. It's such good cereal. So, yeah, we're going to open the straw poll, keep it open for one more minute. So at uh, 12.01 Eastern, we'll close it. Uh, NASA's almost doing the most damage in the entire game, only out damaged by about 150 from the Sivir. So, oh, 250, excuse me. I don't, do ma I don't math well. But. No. No, 150. You're right, You're right the first time. I math well. Hi, my name's Sean, and I know math. Mm, that's a fact. I mean, <laughs> yes, ADCs. Once again, ADCs can't win MVP. The honorable mention, though, Sir Everett's for that game. Uh, Sir Everett did a really good job uh, capitalizing on everything that was handed to him by Legends and by um, Yurimus. Yeah, bro, you played well. Sorry, Jungle keeps popping off. That's really all there is to it. Yeah. All right, so the poll is now closed, and the winner is Legends. Okay. All right, so who is MVP game one? Legends. Yes. Legends, yeah. Hey, Legends. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the place in the thing. Yeah, so that means Legends, and then we get Panic as well because he's team captain. And then we can also get. And that's usually what we do. Yeah. Uh, Slaga, as well, Slasha. Ooh. You can do that. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Hey. Congratulations on the two zero. Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna be joined by your captain? I have no idea. Wow. 
Captain doesn't love you? Well, uh, frankly, we'd appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. No, the point damn. is... The point is that the captain's name is Frank Stewart. Oh, oh really? Yes. <laughs> Our captain honestly currently did, went to go make... I honestly did not know that. Yeah. Our captain's AFK right now. Okay, that's fine. All right. Well, we'll just... Uh, congratulations. Good game. Chat, get questions ready. Yeah, anyone from Caster's Dance got any questions? How can you play well without popping off to where uh, Sir Everett and the rest of the team can get MVPs? Uh, I don't really understand the MVP system, I guess. Because uh, uh, there's like, a, I don't know, there's a lot of unsung like hero stuff that, that my bot lane does that isn't really caught on stream ever. Yep. And... In my mind, I really do think they're the MVP. Because, like, they came into this split being the weakest bot lane ever. Ever? <laughs> like, I don't know about ever. I mean, ever for what I know, right? But, like, across every team, they're the weakest bot lane. And especially since, like, at, or Sir Everett isn't even an ADC, like, player. Jesus, I feel like there's some flame coming out. No, so, like, what I'm trying to say is the, uh, the climb... Yeah, yeah. The, improvement the improvement from that bot lane is monumental. Like you guys have no idea how much. Like it's unsung how much how much work they put in. I think the to play. I, I'll think I'll say this from someone who's had bot lanes and other laners like that. When you be able to see when you're able to see the behind the scenes the whole time and the rest of and we we only see the highlight reels. Um, it's, yeah. it's a little bit harder. But so you know. Maybe just tell Sir Everett to just kill people more forehead without your help. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, they, they 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 have played well. They play their role really well, yeah. which is always really important. You're, you're just gonna yeah. you're just gonna have to find a way to have Sir Everett's one v nine. Yeah. 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 Have to go in and just stone yeah. play and then let him get a penta and then then we'll give it to him. Yeah, yeah like I really feel like the only way you actually get the only way you actually get ADC's MVP is like. By having them do flashy plays or like pull off one v whatevers and then like secure multiple kills, like it's just I'm not gonna say like the ADCs can't win MVP meme is real because like ADCs can do so much work and make or break the game, but you don't really get a flashy AD carry play that makes them MVP worthy in relation to a lot of other roles. AD, unless, AD carry doesn't come off know, and come on until two items and other yeah, other roles just, can come on sooner. Jungler obviously. Uh, yeah, we just, yeah, just kind of yeah. right click, bro. Yeah but, yeah, but like on that on that note, like actually, actually like also like just everybody on the team has improved just so dramatically. It's it's insane. From like the team that I I first met in the beginning to what we have now, it's it's beyond night and day. So, it's like different universes. So would you say that about everyone or just everybody besides your boosted mid laner? Everyone besides my boosted mid laner. I would say oh, hey, no, cool. I would I would almost like I would almost hearken to say it's everybody but me. And like, and like I think I think, I think that's just like so, so big to see that. To see that. Mm -hmm. I I agree. Uh, I would say that you've gotten more comfortable probably back into like settling back into the five setting once again. Right. Right. And then yeah. everything yeah. else is like you've kind of brought them up to where you would want them to be or where Frank wants them to be as captain and stuff like that. And that yeah, yeah. you can definitely see the improvement. I think in my opinion that your most improved player actually has to be Ben in the top lane. If I was to have a vote for your team, I think. Uh, yeah, I'd give it between Ben or or Matt, really. Uh, I I 100% agree. Uh, I don't think there's really many any questions about this game. The only thing I would. Legends, what the hell? You went off without us, you jerk. Oh. Whatever. We don't need. I got tricked. Anyway. I got tricked. I got fooled. He left. Sorry. Um, what what um. I'll say is that. Let's just bring the whole team down here. Yeah. Did he seriously just start a game? <laughs> Dude, I, Dude I thought this was you guys. I thought that... Sorry. Sorry. All right, let's finish this interview. Uh, real quick. Barring any craziness, like One Trick Pony is going 2-0 against KB, y'all are locked into the two spot now. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to happen. We're just talking about it. OTP is going to go 2-0 versus well, KB. If they do, then we will have a tiebreaker match for first place. Um, and how does that uh, happen? Is, that, is it based off of criteria or just a game? It's based off of y'all went one and one on head to head, and that y'all are the only teams that we tied at that point with 17 wins and five losses. 
that's the criteria. And then uh, how, how, how do you decide it? It would be a one game playoff. I'm like ninety. I'm that. like ninety five percent sure on that. Unless there's like a fastest game time thing that I'm not aware of. Um, so if you uh, so so if you want to uh, make sure. That we should just have a five-man sub, and y'all should just sub. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, I, I want to watch you guys beat them. Yeah, so I want to. I want to watch us beat them too. So with yeah. my own, the, with saying that, being a top two seed, maybe this is for both of y'all. Are there any teams that you know? I'm not saying scared or want to avoid, but like some dark horses in the seventh and eighth seeds. Uh, that y'all may be looking at, like, hmm, we don't match up stylistically well versus them, or that you'd rather avoid until later once y'all get into playoff mode? Um, I don't know, I'm sure Frank's opinion is different than mine. But uh, if there's a team in the lower season I'm really interested in playing against, it's Paw Patrol. I think when we got to play them early on in the season, they hadn't found their mesh yet, and I think they're finding it now. Yeah. Paw Patrol, I believe, would are locked into the ninth place. Now with the loss of with the loss of uh, y'all today, so we have our playoff team. So Paw Patrol will be playing against either One Trick Ponies or Fantastic Anime Personalities for that ninth, eighth wild card matchup. Um, so yeah, that'd be really good. It means they would have to win two games to possibly see y'all. Um, Frank, your answer. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's any any team that I am worried. I just think that we play our champs and our picks really well, and I think that it's pretty easy for us to – we have a big enough champ pool to kind of play our style. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I really, I really think that there's a lot of really great teams that um, always throw surprises in, like FAP. And OTP. Mm -hmm. Typical uh, political response from your local politician here, Frank Caputo. You're welcome. No. You're welcome. Uh, and then uh, Yermus in chat saying, uh, I don't know if he wants to play or is interested in playing LDD, but that'd be another one. We have another representative think... of SVT also on the desk here. So. I think Yermus just wants to see Rafael versus Ben again. <laughs> That's just it. What about SVT? You're here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> all right. I think that's going to be it. Anything else? Nope. nope. All right. That was a great answer. All right. Cool. So congratulations to the 2-0. You're locked in for a top. Okay. Question for Frank. I know. God damn it. You're a moose. I noticed Kale would fit really <laughs> well into the dive comp in your first game. Are you planning to field it anytime soon? And what role will it be in? <laughs> uh, if, I didn't, if, if I didn't fail uh, to use my Ignite twice on Nautilus, I think we were going to play Kale next game, but because I did, I unfortunately have to decline that. Mm. So you don't see it in there. Well, well if, you, if you would have Kale in that comp, though, where, where would you put it? Probably, like, maybe on the bottom side of the map? Uh, on the enemy team. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, and and, and oh breaking news! God. Breaking news! There's a trade right before playoffs. You're a moose for oh, a actually, bag. Oh, actually, that's something. <laughs> a bag of, I don't know. I mean, I mean we, <laughs> we managed to do it this game. Pick for the enemy team, so maybe we can do it again in the future. Yeah. Damn. Uh, oh. All right, so that's, that's gonna be it. Hashtag Cogmomet is still not a real thing. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That was so sad. I mean, it never was a real thing, so like... <laughs> You're just being uh, toxic now. All right, all right so that's Sorry, for all of us here at the Not So Lively Broadcast crew. I've been Minbung. That's been Legends of Panic at the Top Hat from the Victorious Lot. 2-0 uh, to today, locking in a top two Always playoff. Always gracious in victory. Yep, Vitautis Diddysis and Ganween Ganweener uh, with his lightsaber. All right, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, and we will see you, I believe, tomorrow. We have UTD versus SVT at 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, and then a double header on Sunday from 6 Eastern for Don't Ban Poppy versus Labby Dabby Doo to solidify some playoff seedings. And then TBR versus FAP 
controlling uh, FAP's destiny on whether they get the anywhere between ninth to, I believe, uh, sixth place. So that's a pretty important game for FAP right there. TBR is already locked in their first uh, place draft pick for next season. So that's awesome at being in the last place. That's not how this works. I'm just making NFL references. And that's going to be it. So for all of us here, thank you very much and goodbye.